good day children last time we studied about the applications of electrolysis electro metal electro plating and electro refining now today we are going to talk about the third uh, application of electrolysis which is electro metallurgy now as i told you last time electro metallurgy basically means extraction of the metal from its ore using the technique of electrolysis we are going to take an example of aluminium electro metallurgy of aluminium actually aluminium exists in the form of al2o3 but the bond between aluminium and oxygen is so strong that it cannot be broken but down by the conventional reducing agents so that is why we have to resort to electrometallurgy now for the like process of electrometallurgy we need to take a tank electrolytic cell this one is made up of iron the electrolytic tank is made up of iron and the electrolyte which is taken inside is al2o3 now this al2o3 is not a very good uh, conductor it is not a very it is a non electrolyte kind of a thing so to increase the conductivity we add a little bit of cryolite to it cryolite is another ore of aluminium na3alf6 besides this we also add fluorospar to it calcium fluoride caf2 now i'll tell you exactly the role of all these chemicals Al two three is the in in the fused form. Fused means it is in the molten state. In the molten state, we take alumina. This is called alumina. Now, initially, the metal aluminium was very expensive, and it was one of the rare metals, just like gold we have these days. The point was that aluminium had a very high melting point. It would melt at two thousand and fifty degrees Celsius, which was very high. Now it would involve the a lot of electricity also in it. Now there were two young children of around twenty years from two different countries. Uh, their name was Hall. One was Hall, and there was another fellow from another country whose name was Herold. Now these two children suggested that if we add another. ore of aluminium to the electrolyte maybe the melting point will dip down anyway when they experimented then it really came down from 2050 to about 960 degree which was quite an achievement so in order to honor these two children the process of electrometallurgy of aluminium is given the name of hall harrell's process so it is known as hall harrell's process in order to honor those two children who had suggested the addition of cryolite so in the exam they can ask you what is the purpose of adding cryolite to the alumina so what will you say that it reduces the melting point of alumina from 2050 to 960 degrees then fluorospar was another thing which was added to it fluorospar is calcium fluoride actually as i told you alumina is not a very good conductor so fluorospar helps in the mobility of the ions it also acts as a electrolyte it helps as a solvent you can say so that is the reason of adding fluorospar in certain books they have written that calcium fluoride is also used to reduce the melting point which is not correct so it increases the mobility of the ions and it acts as a solvent now uh, as you can see the lining of the electrolytic cell is made up of gas carbon it is made up of gas carbon i hope you remember what gas carbon is gas carbon is one of the allotropes of carbon which is an excellent conductor of electricity now the lining of the electrolytic cell is lined with uh, gas carbon and as you can see the bottom of the uh, vessel is sloping the purpose of keeping it sloping is that uh, at towards the end of the reaction we are going to collect aluminium at this place so the collection of aluminium becomes easy if the bottom is slanting now uh, on the top of the electrolyte some coke powder is also sprinkled coke powder is sprinkled what is the purpose of this coke powder actually when when the temperature as i told you then when we pass uh, the electric current through it the temperature of the electrolyte is very high at such a high temperature the oxygen which is present in the air it begins to react with the anode which is made up of carbon or which is actually graphite now this oxygen begins to react with this uh, cathode with this anode which is made up of graphite and if it continues then it breaks the uh, anode rod if we allow this to happen the anode rods will break and the process will discontinue because the circuit will break in between so in order to prevent this the entire electrolytic 
mixture is lined over or covered over by the coke powder so all of them can be asked as a reasoning question why do we add fluorospur why do we add cryolite why is coke powder sprinkled another thing why do we take so many anode rods do you notice that 1 2 3 4 i have taken five anode rods all of them are first collected to one rod and then it is collect, connected to the positive terminal of the battery so with the result all the all these rods are acting as the anodes anode rods they are called anode rods now why do we take so many because as the process will go on you will understand that these anode rods are later on used up so in order to prolong the reaction for a little more time a number of anode rods are taken now in between we have a bulb also uh, and then there is a key and then the negative terminal of the battery is connected to the lining of the electrolytic cell which is uh, made up of gas carbon as i told you all right so this was regarding the arrangement now what is the overall reaction now by uh, so far i think you've all understood how do we write the overall reaction whatever is present in the electrolyte everything is going to be dissociated let's begin with alumina al2o3 this one is going to dissociate into aluminum ions and oxygen ions then cryolite this one is also going to dissociate into sodium ions aluminum ions and fluoride ions and fluorospur calcium fluoride is also going to dissociate into calcium ions and fluoride ions so this is the overall reaction where everything in the electrolytic cell has dissociated now if you notice there are these are the positively charged ions which are present in the electrolyte aluminum sodium calcium and again aluminum and the negatively charged ions are fluoride and oxygen now according to the preferential discharge of ions out of these what will happen on the cathode out of aluminum sodium and calcium aluminum happens to be down below in the reactivity series so it has a better chance of discharging over the cathode so this aluminum accepts three electrons and forms aluminum metal this is what is occurring on the cathode where is the cathode this lining is the cathode so the aluminum keeps on collecting over there now this pure aluminum happens to be heavier than the electrolyte with the result it just settles at the bottom this is the aluminum which is obtained after the process goes on for a while and that is why the bottom is kept slanting there is a control over here you can open the tap and then the uh, molten aluminum will keep falling down over here now this aluminum which is obtained is absolutely about 99.8% uh, pure it is a very very pure form of aluminum and if it is not required for a very strategic purpose we allow it to we use most of the aluminum like this only without any purification or refining now what happens on the anode at anode again we have a choice between fluoride and oxygen out of these three oxygen happens to be down below in the reactivity series so oxygen will lose two electrons and it will form oxygen atom now oxygen happens to be a non metal so it cannot exist in a atomic state so two such reactions will take place two oxygen atoms will combine with each other and form a molecule of oxygen this reaction is taking place on the anode these are the anode rods this is where it is taking place now one the temperature is very high second there is a strong affinity between carbon and this oxygen so the carbon of which the anode rods are made up of that begins to combine with oxygen and forms carbon dioxide now this carbon of which is used up and carbon dioxide is volatilized out now don't you realize that if the reaction will go on for a very long time the carbon of which the anode rods are made up they are used up and they they will become very thin and the reaction will come to a stop so yes the reaction comes to a stop and that is when we need to replace the anode rods so another question can be why are the anode rods replaced from time to time so you will say because they are used up during the reaction the carbon reacts with oxygen forming carbon dioxide and that is why we need to replace it now uh, the percentage in which these three uh, components are taken in the electrolyte are 20% of alumina 60% of cryolite and 20% of fluorospur after a while if you notice only the alumina is being used aluminum is obtained on the cathode 
and oxygen is being obtained at the anode so only this part of the electrolytic mixture is being used rest of them continue to exist there as a catalyst now after a while when all when the composition of alumina becomes very less then this bulb begins to glow the glowing of the bulb is because the resistance of the circuit becomes very less because one of the component in the mixture has been used up so the glowing of the bulb is actually an indication that we need to stop the reaction and refresh the process by adding more of alumina now this can be another question what what does the glowing of the bulb indicate so you will say that the molten alumina has been used and it, it is time to add a fresh alumina so the reaction comes to a stop two times once when the alumina is used up second when the anode rods are used up so either they have to be changed periodically or alumina has to be added if everything goes on the process can go on for a number of days together without bringing coming it to a stop so this was regarding electrometallurgy you need to know the reactions as well as the uh, entire diagram i'll be uh, this uh, lesson will be followed by a worksheet also kindly do the questions of the worksheet as you have been doing earlier all right children god bless you